Peace and blessings in this corner, Boxing 24. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing pretty good myself. Can't really complain. God is good. God is great, you know? Um, yeah, man, so um, in this corner, Boxing 24, man, 24-hour boxing news, right? And, um, you know, it seems like the, the, the topic lately, man, you know, and I get it, you know, because we, we're anticipating the fight between Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. Um, Terrence Crawford, 38, no 29 knockouts. And um, Errol Spence, 28, no 22 knockouts. So we're anticipating this fight, man. But it's just been a lot of talk and a lot of chit-chat from different people. And, um, you know, Mikey Garcia is one of them. He came out this week and he says that you know, talked about his fight with Elvis Spence. Now, he's retired now. He's not fighting no more. And he was a lightweight anyway. He wanted to challenge Elvis Spence. He wanted to be great. And I actually liked him in that fight. I thought he could have really won that fight. But he didn't throw any punches. He didn't do anything. So, he lost the fight. Right? So, now that he's retired, he's just weighing in more on the fight. And he's trying to say that Elvis Spence wears you out. He wears you down. You know, um, he took a lot, he, he takes a lot out of you. And basically he's saying he took a lot out of him. So you're saying that to say what? Because he took a lot out of you, he's going to take a lot out of Terrence Crawford? I mean, I don't get it. Because he took a lot out of you, why he didn't take a lot out of other fighters that he fought, that they still was able to come back and fight good. You know what I'm saying? Cal Brook and, and Sean Porter. Like, I, I don't get it. So he took a lot out of you. But what that got to do with Terrence Crawford? You and Terrence Crawford are two different fighters. Okay? And I will say, you, you, you definitely was on a good streak when you was winning and doing your thing. You had some phenomenal wins. But when you got to Errol Spence, man, you didn't, you didn't put up a fight, man. You didn't do anything, man. And after that, yeah, you came back and won still, but, you know, I don't think that had anything to do with it. If you say that, he took a lot out of you. Okay, I can't deny that because that's what you say. But don't, that don't have anything to do with Terrence Crawford, though. He's a different fighter from you. Okay? Um, and Danny Garcia, another Garcia, he weighing in on a fight. And he says that uh, he fought both of them. And he's really not picking a winner, but... Terrence Crawford is not going to blow, blow through Errol Spence. Well, number one, first of all, you never fought Buzz Crawford as a professional. You fought him in the amateurs years ago. Like, years ago. How many years ago? You've been a professional for 15 years. How long ago did you fight Bud Crawford? Okay, so, I mean, what are you talking about? No, you don't know how he fights. You observed his fights as a pro, but you don't know how he fights. You ain't been in the ring with him to really say what could happen. Because you really don't know. Because you don't know him as a professional. You know what I'm saying? And on the other hand, you're saying that Earl Spence is a weight bully. I've been saying he's a weight bully. He's a big dude. He really ain't no welterweight. He's really big. He really should be fighting at no less than 154, 160. He's a big dude. But he's not no bully as far as like he could just blow through people because he didn't do it to Kell Brook he didn't definitely didn't do it to Sean Porter it took him 11 rounds with Kell Brook it took him even 10 rounds with Ugas but if you notice the people that he's really beaten and he's beaten down is the people that's standing in front of him and not doing too much they're not giving too much work they're not they're not giving too much put back Kell Brook did good for a second for a few rounds you know what I mean but then he didn't keep it up Ugas, he didn't do anything. You know, he hurt Errol Spence, and then, you know, he just let it go. But um, Sean Porter, he was stepping up and stepping into Errol Spence. He was running to him. He was stepping into him, in his space, in his comfort zone, in his, in his in, all up in his face. And he did good. He didn't hurt him. He didn't knock him out. He didn't take too much out of him. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, I really don't want to hear all of that, right? Those, that, that's, you know, that's your opinion. 
And I get it, but, but Terrence Crawford is a different fighter. All right? So, yeah, it's like everybody got their opinion, man. Mikey Garcia, listen, he took a lot out of you. Okay, that's the fight you wanted, though. So, you know, you stepped up, and it is what it is. That's what happened. But, you know, after that, you still could have been good. You still could have came back at welterweight if that's what you wanted to do. I don't think that's your natural weight, 147. I think you should have just stayed at one, uh, 140. I think 140 was best for Mikey Garcia anyway. I don't think 147 was for him, you know? I think he would have really flourished if he would have stayed at 140. But he wanted to take a chance, and he did. Um, Danny Garcia, you know, his best weight was 140, man. That's where he had his best fights, man. As, like I said, Lamont Peterson, Amir Khan, uh, Matisse, Zab Judah, like, like, well, no, he fought Zab Judah at uh, 147, but, um, wait, wait a minute, did he fight Zab Judah at 147? Or was Zab Judah 140 then? I'm trying to remember, but that was so long ago. I can't remember that fight. It might have been 140 where he fought Zab Judah. I don't think he fought Zab Judah as a well to it. But, it, it, but, but in any event, it was either 140, 147, but 140 was his best, best fights, okay? When he got the welterweight, you know, that's where he took them losses. He took that loss to keep them. He looked and he took that, that loss to Sean Porter. Close fights, but he took them L's. Okay? So at the end of the day, man, listen, you can have your opinion, Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, but Bud Crawford, man, gotta get in there and fight. And you guys wasn't rushing to fight him. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you, you wasn't you wasn't rushing to fight uh, Bud Crawford. You know, it seemed like y'all was ready to take more of a chance with, with Errol Spence than y'all would have took with Buck Crawford. That's all I'm saying. So nobody wasn't really rushing to fight him. But anyway, it is what it is, man. The fight is ho hopefully upon us this this October, November, late the latest maybe. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to it, man. I got Buck Crawford winning the fight. I don't care about the, none of that, man. I don't care about what people are saying because... Errol Spence is not indestructible. And, you know, for him to say he's indestructible because he went through that car accident and came back, and no, no, you're not indestructible. What it is is that God allowed you to come back from that car accident, a horrific car accident. That ain't had nothing to do with you. That don't make you indestructible because you could still die, right? And I'm not wishing no death on Errol Spence. I'm just saying, no, you're not indestructible. I was in a car accident, okay, left for dead, bleeding, 2011, the, 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 I was hit by a car who ran the red light, and my car ran into a brick wall, okay? So I was left there bleeding to death, trauma and, and death, and they called my family and said, he's not going to live, okay? So I know about that. That had nothing to do with me. That was God allowing me some time for the doctors to get to me, for me to get to that hospital, and for them to do what they had to do. That was God. It had nothing to do with Anthony. I am not indestructible, because I could get into another car accident and it might not be the same result, okay? So I know where the power lies, all right? And after the car accident, when I did live, when I did make it, after I made it, obviously I made it, I'm here, but they said I would never walk again. Here comes God again, right? Same thing with you, Errol Spence. Here comes God again. Yeah, he allowed you what? To get back in the ring and be able to fight. Then you had a detached retina, and he was able to fight again. That's God, man. That ain't got nothing to do with you. Realize where the power lies. I had a detached retina as well, okay? And I'm back from that. Still healing from that. But I'm just saying, you got to know where the power lies, man. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's God, Okay? Because you got people that, some people that get into a car accident with much less, much less velocity, and they don't make it, they die. You got people getting hit by cars, you got people getting in, in car accidents that's way less, and they don't make it. Or they hurt to the point where they're not the same. So, when you was in a car accident like what you was in, Earl Spence, and what I was in, man, that's God, man. You know, they said I would never walk again, and I'm back running. You know, I went back to the doctor. They couldn't believe it. 
and that was 2011. This is 2022. That was 11 years ago, and I'm still running. Ain't got no problems with my with, with, with the areas that was hurt. My leg, my shoulder, my tibia bone was cracked in half and was sticking outside of my leg, and I'm still doing it, man. Running miles and miles, walk as much as I want to, ride my bike, play basketball, hit the bag, spa, do whatever I want to do. See, but the power is not me. The power is God, all right? So anyway, I'm just saying, man, we're looking forward to this fight with Bud Crawford. And we're looking forward to this fight with Errol Spence. And I got Bud stopping Crawf uh, Spence late. And don't get mad because Tyson or Bradley or certain people, Roy Jones is picking Bud Crawford. That's what they're picking from what they see. You got people that's picking Spence from what they see. Some people's picking Spence just because. Some people's picking Crawford just because. I'm picking them from what I see Spence do and not do. And I know what I've seen Crawford do and what, and what he can't do as well. I'm picking it based off of that. And I don't believe just because he don't start fast, that don't mean he can't beat Spence. Okay? I'm not saying he should wait till the eighth round to get going. But I'm just saying, if he starts off a little slow in the first couple of rounds and he don't really figure it out yet, that don't mean that he's going to get hurt or he's going to get knocked out. He's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? He's smart enough. He's not going to use that ring enough. And he's not going to waste no punches with Errol Spence, I don't believe. I think he's going to be pinpoint. And when he lands shots on Errol Spence, Errol Spence is going to feel it. And, you know, and then Errol Spence is going to feel it to the point where he's not going to just rush in like that. See, you have to make him honest. You got to make him realize, man, no, this ain't a game. I could put you out. You know what I'm saying? With one or two shots. And I think Bud is the man that's going to do that with Errol Spence. All right? So, you know, everybody got their opinion. I got mine, but we're going to see, man. We're just waiting for the fight. All right? So, peace and blessings in this corner, Boxing 24. Please subscribe to the page. Please leave your comments. Everybody be safe. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Protect yourself. Wear your mask. Social distance. COVID is still here. It's not gone. All right? And at the end of the day, man, you know, you don't want people, you know, it's a lot of germs out here, man. So I wouldn't want anybody, you know, sneezing on me, coughing on me, spreading their germs around on me anyway. So I wear the mask regardless. All right? But that's that's just my my take on it. But I wish everybody the best. Please be safe out there, 4th of July weekend. Don't get caught up in the madness. And um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace.